Sponge Murphy here. How are you all getting on today? What are you laughing at? Come over here. Come over here. Come over here, say ball. Hello. What's it doing? Be quiet. Oh, small days. One of the things I wanted to get onto the channel a bit more were uh, painting tutorials. Um, but I've never really been too confident enough to get painting tutorials up. So what I'm going to do is over the next few weeks, I'm going to be painting up the shade, so I, shade spire box of Spike Claws Swarm. So I'm going to be painting these uh, individually and I'll be doing individual videos for each character in it. Now I'm doing this because I want to get used to painting in a painting tutorial way with recording. So this is kind of like the first effort. So there's a few little patch, bad patches here and there but I've edited most of it out. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out what's the best setup here. Um, and I hopefully by the, by the time I get to the last guy on this it'll be the best quality and the best painting tutorial out of the lot. So with that, hopefully you guys enjoy this and make sure to let me know what you guys think at the end. Come on then. What do you want to say then? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Alright, so first off I base my model with rat skin flesh over a grey primer. I use Halford's Primer Grey. It's very reliable. Um, it doesn't say anything else on, on the can after that. It's just literally a grey can that says Halford's Primer Grey. Uh, it's a big can, you get a lot in it, very reliable. Spreads across the model very easily. So, um, yeah, rat skin flesh all over uh, the skin tone first. Um, not too familiar with some of the skin tones uh, that I'll be using in this, but I'll, I'm sure as I'll use them by the end. Uh, so then I use Cadian Flesh on a Bugman's Glow on the two rats on his shoulder. Just to kind of break up the colours of the skin a little bit and um, to make them stick out a little bit more. And then I, the way I like working is I like to kind of get the, the inside of the model painted first like the skin and then work my way out. So I went with Zandri Dust over any of the kind of cloth parts uh, around the, around on his back. Um, that Especially those little small bits in around his neck and everything. They're kind of hard to reach but... And that's why I like to get them done now so I can paint over any mistakes or right? Um And of course I am kind of following the same colour scheme that they give you in the Warhammer TV paint scheme. Uh, or in the Warhammer painting tutorial. But there's a few colours that I don't have so I have to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, and so hopefully with the next few after this I'll be using my own paint schemes. Just kind of get a good basic feel. Or a good feel of what uh, kind of base colours to use. So obviously I went to corn red here. Um, that would have been one of the examples that I can't follow colour for colour because I don't have a lot of red. Um, then Mornfang Brown just over any of uh, the wooden parts of the spear. Then I moved on to some of the the metal parts which is... I, don't, I think the metal parts are kind of, if you want to get a nice basic metal colour, you really can't go wrong with a base colour of lead belcher with kind of any wash over I think usually works. Uh, especially Nullin Oil or Agrax Earthshade. Um, and I didn't mix it up with too many metals in this model, I wanted to kind of keep them the basic colours down. I didn't go, didn't add any brass, I had written down to add some kind of gold parts or some brass parts but I just left it nice and simple uh, with the silver in the end. Um, on his on his chest plate, his back, his helmet, and uh, the the top of the spear, the metal part. So that was all the base colors. Of course, I had to add a couple of layers for uh, the skin, um, and then just tidy up any kind of parts after that. So obviously, I did the Zandri dust on the teeth and on his nails as well, um, and on the cloth wrapped around the spear. So then, now the tutorial on Warhammer TV went with Agrax Earthshade. So usually I wouldn't put Agrax Earthshade over a whole model, especially with uh, a Skaven guy because he has so much skin. So what I did was, I just followed that for now, usually I'd put a different kind of wash over the skin tones, but I kept with the Agrax Earthshade. Um, and then once it was dry, I really darkened it up. Put uh, It kind of blended the colours together a little bit more. And let me move on to the next step of getting the next layer of the skin up. Now the next colour I used was... Cadian Flesh Tone. Now I really, really couldn't get off to a good start with Cadian Flesh Tone. I tried it a few months ago. But it's one of these paints where you have to be persistent with it. And you have to let it dry and add another thin layer. Because it doesn't work with just one layer. It comes out 
Uh, you can even see your hair once I'm putting it onto it. I think his arm here I, I put it onto next. Um, or his tail even. It just doesn't really look as nice when you're adding it. So you have to give it a chance to dry and add a second. Even a third layer. You could easily go with a third layer of uh, kitty and flesh tone on uh, any skin parts as well. So then move on to adding the next layer onto the the kind of the robe. So in this case, I had, the only red I other red I had was Evil Sun Scarlet, which looking back at it now, it was too bright. So maybe I should have added in uh, a little bit of a darker color to kind of darken it a little bit. But it, it turned out okay in the end. But I think a couple of red paints is what I'm going to have to invest in. I think I had it written down here. Uh, was darker red. I think that was the one I should have went with uh, over this. But it looked fine in the end. It wasn't too much of... Um, it wasn't too bright compared to what I thought it was going to look. Once it dries, I just have to learn to give things a chance to dry and then look back at them and it should be okay. Um, the greys I had, the greys I went with uh, Storm Vermin, which I forgot to put on the video. Storm Vermin fur on any kind of the fur parts, and kind of on his neck and on his arm. And then with the sl Slanesh Grey, which again was a little bit too bright for kind of putting it. It's a highlight colour, I think. So maybe that's another colour I'm going to have to invest in as well. But uh, it turned out okay in the end. It wasn't too much of a of a complimentary colour, kind of. And then, of course, on to the... God, I can't even remember what do I have written down. The cloth. That's going to be on the robes. Or not his robes. Uh, on his back. And then the cloth wrapped around the spear. And on his nails and on his teeth. Just slightly highlighting, highlighting with rack art flesh. And just kind of any of the parts that are sticking up. Which... Kind of on this guy, on his back particularly, it kind of, it, the bits pop up so much, uh, it's kind of hard to do it wrong. And then, I went on to Runefang Steel. Now this is kind of, I think your basic kind of metal colour where you have uh, your lead belcher with your wash. Usually I go with a null and oil wash, probably two washes. Um, and then I'll add on a Runefang, Runefang Steel. Uh highlight just around the edges to kind of make it pop a little bit better and again it's like your basic metal color scheme it works you don't need to it doesn't make it look like doesn't make the metal stick out a whole lot but it does just enough uh to make it stick out that little bit and then just to change the tail up a little bit i went over with caribou crimson all over the tail uh just to give it a different kind of a uh, color shade then a color shade from the rest of the skin because I think that kind of purplish, more of a reddish tint onto the tail uh, makes it look that much better. And then that was most of the base colours done, or most of the... Uh, most of the layering and highlighting done. So then I went on to work on the base. Just kept it really simple with storm form and Vir all over. I really didn't want to go into too much details with it because it's kind of awkward. Because I didn't want to. It's kind of awkward to get it on camera. So I kind of went with the basic grey with uh, storm form and fur, and then a null and oil wash all over. Make sure to get a good bit into the recesses. This is kind of the case where you can go a little bit heavier with. Your washes, so you use either null and oil, or you can go with agrax or shed over the wash, or as a wash. And then once it's dry, I, I remember I had to put my neck to the heater because it was just taking so long to dry. Um, I went with a dry brush of Dawnstone, which I keep thinking it's called Dawnstone Grey, but it's not. It's just called Dawnstone. Um, it's very subtle kind of highlights. It's hard to see on the video, but once it's finished, they really stick out. Um, just remember keep very little on your brush and then just let it build up layer by layer and then of course I went with a brown uh, the Mornfang brown around the edge of the base just kind of keep it in with the theme that comes with the box and that was it uh, there's a few bits to paint on them you could really um, make parts stick out if you wanted it but I just went with a very simple paint scheme the red the silver all of them there's nothing too special nothing too hard it's very easily done for tabletop 
uh, standard, which is what I was kind of aiming for. But again, this is the first video of a couple of tutorials that I'm wanting to eventually build up my skills on. So hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hopefully the next video will be of better quality. The one after that will be better again. And it's all about building uh, the quality of these. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you guys like this. And I'll see you guys next video.